Welcome along to day 10 of the Tokyo Paralympic Games from the Ariake Gymnastics Centre on day 7 of the Boccia Tournament. Now, across the competitions, athletes play in the mixed pairs, teams or individuals. But today, however, we're going to concentrate on the pairs, the BC4 pairs. And that top game is what we're going to be watching today, Colombia versus Japan. Japan versus Brazil in the teams as well, also on court. And Hong Kong versus Australia. But that top one, Colombia versus Japan, is who we're going to be watching today. Now, if you're new to Boccia, it's a really fascinating game and it can change in the blink of an eye. So where are we at with the standing at the moment in the pairs BC4? Well, it's Hong Kong who are leading at the moment. They played three, they've won three, and they've not lost any yet. Then Thailand and then the Russian uh, committee as well, and Colombia as well as Japan just uh, fifth there as well. So plenty to, to do for Japan as it stands at the moment. The two bottom teams playing here looking to see if they can book their place into the semi-finals of this competition. The individual game consists of four ends and the pairs does as well. Each player has got six balls that are spread out between the players. So one of the players will have three balls and the other one will have three and they will take their turns in trying to get their balls closest to the white jack. We're just warming up here at the moment on court four. Boccia made its debut during the New York Paralympic Games in 1984. Beatrice Castillo is our referee for this game. And it is a mixed game. It's mixed gender sport is Boccia. And you can see a dramatic swing in the match quite quickly as well. So Japan just warming up first then here. And they will start first because they are currently holding the red balls. And red always starts first. It's decided on a coin toss uh, before they come out. But Japan will be getting us underway here. They have three players involved in the pairs, but only two will play during the match. And then during the match, you are able to substitute a player, just one substitute during the pairs. So two will start, and then you are able to substitute if you would like. Same for both sides, Colombia as well, the three players involved in it. This is how Colombia are looking at the moment in the competition. They've lost both of their matches so far. So they'll want to come back and win this one. Two played, two defeats. It was a 2-6 defeat to Hong Kong and a 3-2 oh, defeat to Thailand. There are, are three athletes, Saley, Chika Chika and... Rosales playing for Colombia. Warm up will be complete shortly for Japan. Botch has had a total of 115 athletes taking part in these games 41 female, 74 male. Four classifications that compete at the Paralympic Games as well. You've got BC1, BC2, BC3 and BC4. And you play in the individuals and the teams, as well as the pairs, which we're concentrating on today. The pairs in the BC4 category. And we're just waiting for the rest of the players around us on the other courts to finish their warm-up as well. And all players will start these games at the same time. In the BC4 pairs, you get five minutes per pair, per end, to deliver your throws, your six balls, three balls each. And you'll hear the timekeeper will announce how long players have left when the clock starts ticking down. We'll just wait for Beatrice Castido to get us underway. She will announce when the game is going to start. Start a 
So we are underway here then in the BC4 pairs game, Colombia versus Japan. And it will be Kimura who sets the jack for Japan first. And she is elected for a shorter jack. And the first ball will be thrown. So, 37-year-old throws the first ball in this BC4 pairs Pool B match at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games, and it will be Colombia's go in this first end. Dubansili first up for Colombia. Clock is ticking down in the top left hand of the corner uh, of the screen, rather. And it's gone down from five minutes. So see the captain band as well for Divan Sely. We will call the shots in this Bears BC4 Pool B match. Whereas. It is Saki, Saki Shun, who is captain for Japan. It's discussing here exactly what they would like to do. Saki thinking about the second ball to be thrown for Japan. Communication incredibly important here, and it's going to be. Kimura, who takes the second one. She will She's trying to push off the defending blue ball there and push on the jack a little bit closer to the red, and that's exactly what they've done there. So where does that leave Colombia? Captain just having a chat to his teammate there. Chica Chica. <laughs> it will be Sally again here. For Columbia then. of a pacier ball there going for a, a smash was the right hander trying to just open the ball open the game up again for Colombia but he's now left the jack slightly exposed for Japan Osaki to take the next ball then the third ball will be the captain thinking exactly what shot he wants to play here. Every ball is slightly different. And Isaki just really visualising the ball before he throws it. Nice from... The captain there of Japan, Isaki, just nestles that ball, the red ball, just next to the jack, and also 
Makes it a little bit more difficult for Colombia to have a clean advantage to the jack here. Still a good line for Saley, but it's going to be Chicka Chicka who throws this third ball for Colombia. Pacey ball trying to push off that defending Japanese red ball that was closest to the jack. It is still the ball that is closest as it stands. Listen, here her captain wants her to do next. Discussing between the pair. Be the captain taking the ball. The throw next. Two balls remaining off the back of this throw for Colombia. Another pacey ball. Just goes out of play, becomes a dead ball for Colombia. And this will be the final ball thrown by Chica Chica. One minute. One minute is called for Colombia. They've got a minute left to throw this ball then. Japan with still three balls remaining, you have to say, early on in this first end of this four end match. Japan might have the advantage here. It's a good ball from Chicka Chicka. Let's see what Japan have in response, though. They have three balls remaining. And the captain, Saki, just coming to have a look a little bit here to see exactly. See the replay there of Colombia's final ball. First Paralympic Games for some of these athletes. The Japanese team, however, the captain, it is indeed his debut. One forty. Wait came 14th rather in the world championship pairs bc4 and liverpool in great britain in 2018 individual 24 so just doing the push on there of his own ball to get a little bit closer to the jack and he's really opened up the jack now for the final two balls from the japanese at their home paralympic games one minute in front of a lot of their home crowd as well. Obviously, no fans in the Ariaki Center, but there is plenty of teams watching on and officials and staff here from Japan who will be cheering on. 
the Japanese pair here. So Isaki really strong there, going for the rock roll up and over, but it was really well done, really well executed, and it will be Kimura who takes the final shot, then the final throw for Japan, just trying to get one a little bit closer, and that looks like it will be either three or four for Japan in this first end. We'll just have to have a quick look, because Beatrice Casido just going to double check that the players not necessarily that they're happy but that they understand the scoring at this point so she's just going to measure one of the Colombian blue balls there up against two three three okay three three red then I think we're going to hear from Beatrice Casido. Double check there, but it looks like that will be three red. So Japan take an early lead in this first end then of this pairs BC4 pool B match as these athletes look to book their place into the semi finals of Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games here in the Boccia. Second end then getting underway here in the BC4 pairs pool B match between Colombia versus Japan. Japan have won the first end 3-0. They've got the advantage heading into this second end. But it is Colombia now who will set the jack and set the tone of the game, really, or the end, rather. The captain... Saley just setting quite quite a short jack there. Not as short as we've seen in the past, but obviously his preferred placement of the jack. First ball to be thrown then will be from the Colombian captain. So Japan have made a substitution here. Kimura Gori is being replaced by Hiromitsu Wataruri. Hiromitsu getting involved then in this second end. You can only make one substitution and they've decided to make it in this second end. Debut as well for Furumitsu. First ball thrown for Furumitsu is a little bit too much pace on it and has just gone past the jack. The 36-year-old finished 14th in the pairs in the BC4 in 2018 in Liverpool. Fifth in the pairs for the Asian Para Games in Jakarta in 2018 and ninth in the individual BC4 competition in the same year in the same place in Jakarta. Excellent from Isaki there, the captain.
is taking an early advantage in this end. They do lead 3-0. So, see what Colombia can do. Still plenty to play in this match. Two more ends to come off the back of this one. Colombia choosing to remain with the same lineup that they started this match with. And in the second end, it will be the same two players. Rosales not been called up yet the substitution in Colombia so a smash there from the Colombian captain just trying to again give himself a bit more space here so looks like an excellent move there from the captain just pushing on the jack giving his teammate a bit of space Chicka chicka them. Just having a look exactly at the angle here and speaking to her captain ahead of the shot. Two and a half minutes left on the clock for this pair to take their final remaining four balls. Three balls each, split between the two contenders. Both players must be set and ready back into their box before the ball is thrown or they can face the penalty. Excellent from Chica Chica there. She's pleased with that one and I think the captain is too. Just pushing off Japan's ball from the current winning position it was in. Conversations then between Nisaki, the captain, and Furumitsu about their next tactical move here. Debut Paralympic Games for all these players in the Japanese team, including the captain and including this man as well, Shiromitsu. 36-year-old. Ambition to win a medal here in the 2020 Paralympic Games in front of their home crowd. Not enough pace on that one. It remains Japan's turn. Nice ball there from Isaki just to try and take control again of this end. Japan do lead 3 0. Oh. Excellent there from the Japanese captain.
So, in the pairs BC4, Japan are the world number 19s. But here, we're taking command of this second end, best way they can, really, with the blue ball that is still closest as it stands. We're just going to have a check for this one with the referee, Castido just to see if that blue ball there from Colombia is closer. Colombia are world number sevens in the world botcher ranking, which did freeze in uh, March 2020 with the changing conditions around the world during due to the global pandemic. World rankings were frozen. Remains a final ball then for Japan. Hoping to capitalise on that 3 0 victory in the first end. enough pace on that final ball from Japan give Colombia a bit of a an advantage here with the final two balls remaining of this end clearly just really having a think about this one before before throwing Just over a minute left then for Colombia. A very accurate shot there from Kiban Sely, the captain from Colombia. But did it do exactly what he was hoping to do? I would think maybe yes, because he's trying to open up the jack a little bit more, but this is going to be a, a close one to the end, unless they can get that final ball just to push on a little closer and it looked like that red ball there as you can see yeah just slightly touched that blue ball of Colombia to make it the closest ball to the jack so it was a really 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 impressive shot there and the accuracy was brilliant from the captain of Colombia just 25 years old First Paralympic Games as well. And eighth in the individual BC4 in 2018 in Liverpool. Final ball then from Chica Chica. 31 year old. Also making her Paralympic debut here at Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. So that's it. One blue then for Colombia. So the game doesn't quite swing. But it is a one point for the Colombian team on the board. They're off the mark. And they now trail 3-1 heading into the third end of this BC4 pairs pool B match, trying to get into the semi-finals of the Boccia tournament.
Third end underway then in this pairs BC4 Pool B match. Colombia versus Japan. And Japan are leading 3 1 at the halfway point, heading into N3. Looks like Colombia have made a change as well. Prisales has come in, hasn't played yet in this entire match. Substituted for Sely. He takes the captain's band as well. So, it's confirmation of the substitution there. the 31-year-old comes to join World Championship one second silver in the individuals BC four in 2018 in Liverpool in the Great Britain competition and 13 in the pairs in the BC four so first ball then for Columbia and it's a pacey ball from Chica Chica <laughs> opening up the jack a little bit more for them and it works pretty well but we're early on in this end. Slower ball from Rosales there, and that's enough to be leading the way in this third end. Four categories then across Boccia, BC1, BC2, BC3 and BC4. BC3, BC4, they play pairs as well as the individuals. And BC1 and BC2, they play teams instead of pairs. But BC4, their impairments are of non-cerebral palsy origin. And they can have an assistant as well who you will see sitting next to the teams. Rosales again to take the third Ball for Colombia. More of a lob there. Trying to just open the game up more for Colombia there, and he has done that well. Is the angle quite what he was after? Still a red ball of Japan blocking his way, but there is that blue in the middle of the two reds that he might try and push on and just. Maybe get two balls closer to the jack here. Let's see what Rosales decides to do. Exactly that, and that is a beautiful shot from the Colombian. The accuracy of that one, not even touching slightly the red, and that was an excellent one to get two balls closer here in this third end. They need to come back into this one. Japan leading 3-1 if they won this end by two, then it would put us level heading into the fourth and final end, which should be the decider.
excellent from Kuramitsu. A really, really accurate push on of the jack. Really excellent lob there. Just pushing that jack just further out to give the captain Isaki a perfect line towards the jack and to try and win this end. Still plenty to go though. Three balls for Japan remaining, two balls for Colombia. Still plenty of time to do it. Colombia still got three minutes left on the clock. Japan here, two minutes. But what it would be for these Japanese athletes to win in front of their home crowd. Excellent there from Isaki. Really great teamwork from the pair. Furumitsu just with that incredibly attacking shot to open the jack up more. And Isaki just capitalising on that space and that great line. It's going to be harder now then for Colombia, especially for Chica Chica, who has a clear line of the jack, but has a defensive red ball sitting in front of it. She's going to go for quite a pacey ball here, and she just goes a little bit wide there. So that ball is out. Frustration there for Chica Chica. She knows that wasn't exactly what she wanted to do there. But she will go again. With the final ball for Colombia. And this will be a nervy ball. <laughs> 31 years old, her first Paralympic Games. Not close enough, that one. So Japan of two balls remaining. You think at this point with the red ball closest in this third end, they can only capitalize on their advantage here. And you can see Isaki just chatting with Hiromitsu about the best way to attack this final few moments of this third end. Discussion still going on between the captain and Furumitsu. Furumitsu, who was not playing in the first end, it was Kimura. And then the replacement was made, and Furumitsu has been playing for N2 and N3. Let's see what Asaki can do here. Representing Japan. Excellent from Asaki there. Just pushing on his own ball, making two closer to the jack at this point. And there is still a ball remaining. Look at the skill of that one, making sure he didn't touch that blue ball too much and push that towards the jack. And just managed to Push on his own ball to gain another point here in the third end of the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games, the BC4 pool match, to try and get into the semi-finals of the boccia competition. So that one might be a little bit too pacey and has moved itself away from the the jack, so it could just be two for Japan here, but we're going to just check. The referee, Beatrice Casido, just getting out the measurement to be sure. But from the naked eye, you'd have to say it's two, but we're just going to double check. Yes, and it will be. Two then for Japan. And that gives them a healthy lead heading into this final end confirmation and that's it two red
So that becomes a 5-1 lead for Japan in this third end of this BC4 pairs Paul B match, trying to book their place into the semi-finals of the competition here in Tokyo 2020 for the Paralympic Games. Confirmation there, 5-1 then for Japan. They take the lead heading into this fourth end. They've led the way so far. End one, they won 3 0. End two, they lost but only went down by a point. And now a 5 1 lead heading into the fourth and deciding end. Fourth and deciding end getting underway then here at the Araki Gymnastics Centre in the pairs BC4 Paul B match. Where these two teams, Colombia and Japan, battling it out to try and get into the semi finals of the pairs competition at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. It is. Japan, who leads 5-1, heading into this final end. Mitsu to take the first shot for Japan. A long jack there from Colombia, but that's a good starting point for Japan. An excellent ball from Shiramitsu Wataru. Rosales of Colombia is the next to take a throw. A very long ball set by Colombia in this final end. Can they come back into this? 5-1 defeat as it stands. Still plenty to go, though, in this final end. Rosales just thinking about this one. A nice long ball, and it just is shot a little bit too far past the jack. A bit too much pace on that one, and it is not closest. Columbia have played two, and they've lost two at this stage. Discussions then between the two players. Chicka Chicka's played this entire match. One substitution earlier, which was Gonzalez, who's come on. Two and a half minutes left for Colombia.
Very pacey from Chicka Chicka. Uh, trying to push that Jack away from that red ball from Japan so far. And we've only got two balls remaining for Colombia in this final end. We're going to have to pull out something quite spectacular here. But you'd have to think at this point in the match, they're not going to be able to get enough of their balls closer to win this end and win this match. It's better from Grizales here. That ball is closer, but even if they manage to get their final ball closer, it wouldn't give them enough of a lead to take the win here. But let's see where we're going to go with Japan. So Japan really with the advantage here. Five balls remaining in this end, the fourth and final end. Three minutes left on the ball and on the board rather, and they are leading 5-1. Uh, just pushed, pushed uh, off um, Colombia's ball, actually closer to the jack there. Probably not quite what he was hoping from that ball. But they can lose this end and still win the match. So we go again for Japan. Four balls then remaining. Three minutes left on the clock. You'd have to say Japan are in a very strong position here to take the win. A nice move there from Isaki. Moving that blue ball that was closer away and nestling in the red defending ball. And we all hope to to take the win here in the end. But I'm sure whether it'll be enough to win the match. balls remaining for Japan then. Columbia at this point would have hoped the scoreline would have been a bit closer. Excellent from the Japanese captain there, Asaki. Two balls remaining. Furumitsu looking like he has both the balls, both throws left of this final end. Pacey, but it looks like it's going towards that blue ball. Yeah. Not quite close enough. See what he was doing there, but just ran out of steam as it got towards the jag. And it still looks like they'll probably win this end and win this match. 
extra points there at this point are always important. Final ball then of this end, and it goes to Japan. A pacey ball from Furumitsu, and that does push on his own ball closer. So, looks like Japan are going to win this one in the pair's BC4 Pool B match. Both captains just coming forward then, Isaki and Rosales. And this will just be so the referee can explain exactly the scoring system at the moment of what she thinks and checking that blue ball and that red ball as well because that will determine whether it's one, two or three here. Definitely two. Two. So there we go. Confirmation there of two for Japan. That takes them to a total of seven in this match. Let's just wait for the referee to call time. Two red, end of the match. So Japan, they do win in front of their home team here. And it is 7-1 for Japan in this pairs BC4 Paul B match, looking to book their way into the semi-finals. It is 7-1 against Colombia here at the Ariake Gymnastics Center at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. So, Japan take a comprehensive win here, 7-1 against Colombia. Everyone just congratulating each other. Not quite what Colombia would have wanted at this point, but Japan were excellent. Some great shots being thrown by the three athletes involved in the team, Isaki Furumitsu and Kimura. And it's that captain there, Isaki, who helped his team along to the 7-1 win. First Paralympic Games for the Japanese team, the players in it. And they'll be happy with that 7-1 win. So the way it works in Boccia is the captains and the teams just come over and sign off the match where the referee just explains the scoring system and both players will agree at this point to the 7-1 win for Japan. So Japan give themselves an extra boost in this fight to get into the semi-finals for the pairs BC4 Pool B match. Japan beat Colombia 7-1 here at the Ariake Gymnastics Center at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games.
along to day 10 at the Tokyo Paralympic Games from the Ariake Gymnastics Center on day seven of the Boccia tournament. And today we're gonna to be concentrating on the team BC1, BC2, Paul B group. Here are the standings. Brazil are leading at the moment from Republic of Korea. And the game we're gonna be concentrating on today is Japan versus Brazil. Three played for Japan. Two wins, one defeat. Whereas Brazil, same. Three played, two one and one loss. So in Boccia, you have the individuals, the teams and the pairs, but only BC1 and BC2 play in the individuals and the teams. And the teams have three players, two balls each for each end. And the ends are the same amount of time, but we have more than any other of the competitions in Boccia. There is six ends per team game. And in the team games, in the BC1, BC2, you get six minutes per team per end. Here is our referee then, Ronnie Van Ash, who will be getting us underway in this team. BC1, BC2, Paul B match of the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. So, warm-up underway. Let's have a look how Brazil have got to this point in the pool matches. Two wins and one defeat. They lost 9-2 to Portugal, but beat Slovakia and the Republic of Korea. This will be our starting three players. Santos, de Oliveira, as well as Jose de Oliveira as well. Andreas de Oliveira and Jose de Oliveiras. And Tafara is the substitute. Two balls then each for the players. And then they will be taking on Japan. And here is your starting lineup of the three Japanese players. Sugimura Haitaka. This is how they did it. Japan have just had one defeat to Republic of Korea, 6-5, but they beat Portugal and Slovakia so far in Pool B. And this is our starting lineup of Nakamura Takumi. Heroes Takayuki and Sugimura Haitaka. On the reserves bench, you've got Fuji Yuriko. And like I said, this game will be six ends. There is Sugimura Haitaka. One captain as well for this match and it will be Brazil who start they have the red balls and Japan have blue red always starts in Boccia they flip a coin to see who will start and it will be Brazil
So Sugimura Hitaka is captain. And for Brazil, it'll be Marcel Santos. Marcel Santos, the far left with 203. This is Andreas de Oliveira with Jose de Oliveira at the far right of the screen here. And it will be Brazil getting us underway in this team BC1, BC2. Pool B match here at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. The match is underway then between Japan and Brazil. Six ends to determine who will get into the semi-finals to give themselves the best chance for gold here in the BC1, BC2 team matches. Japan versus Brazil. And it is Brazil who get us underway here. Setting the jack. Jose de Oliveiras is going to place the first ball. Excellent first ball from Jose de Oliveira. Making it as difficult as possible for Japan. The jack is still open here, depending who is going to get us underway. <laughs> will be Nakamura. Takumi, who looks like he's going to take the first throw here. BC1 category for Nakamura. BC1 and BC2 players involved in this. The BC1 player, they must play the entire game. So you'd expect uh, Nakamura to stay on. Going to check the measurements here. For me, that looks like the red might be a bit closer, but we'll just double check here, see what Ronnie Van Ash says. It will determine who plays next. It looks like that blue ball is the closest ball for Japan, so it will be Brazil who are up next to play their second ball of this end. It looks like it will be Andreas de Oliveira. Getting us underway here. She's in the BC2 category. It is Jose de Oliveira who is in the BC1. He will probably play what well, he will have to as the BC1 player play this entire match. First Paralympic Games for De Oliveira. Just checking this ball again. See what Ronnie Van Ash says. Two very close balls early on in this first end. Six ends here, and it looks like it is still Brazil's go then. Marcel Santos with the third ball then for Brazil. Captain in this game. You can see the C clearly on his arm. Nice from Brazil. 
that ball is close enough and it just pushed on his own ball as well, a little bit closer to the jack. Much longer the BC1, BC2 games because there's six minutes on the clock per end. So we've had a substitution. Heroes Takayuki has taking his... My apologies, he's already been on. We just haven't seen a ball from him thrown yet. Heroes Takayuki takes the first his first throw of the game. And it is an excellent one from Heroes. You see what it means as well. He knows that's a good ball, and it is a good ball. Brazil just thinking here, speaking to their captain, Marcel Santos. Oliveira then with her second ball to be thrown. Just listening to her captain there. First Paralympic Games then for the 20 year old. Marcial Santos then with the next delivery for Brazil. And he's up against a bit of a defense from Japan. However, there are three balls quite close to the jack as well. So see exactly what he does there. Will he aim for their own balls to push on? Didn't quite get the angle of that right, so he's actually pushed on, uh, pushed off Japan's ball that was closer to the jack and, and just given Japan a bit of an advantage here. But it's going to be Jose de Oliveira who's next, the BC1 category player in this team game. Each team is BC1, BC2 players, but the BC1 player must play the entire match. Mixed as well, of course, in Boccia. It is a mixed game. And Jose de Oliveira is a very strong player for Brazil, as you can see there. Trying to, trying to just gain a bit of an advantage there, but I'm not sure it worked out exactly what, with what Jose de Oliveira was hoping for there, because the placement wasn't, wasn't enough, really, to push Japan's two balls that were on the court away. But they have set up a bit of a defense around the jack now, so they haven't made it easy for Japan. Here is Takayaka, uh, Takayuki. Taking his second throw of the end. You hear the Japanese captain there, Sugimuri Haitaka, just almost reassuring Hiro's Takayuki that actually they still they can still do well here. Nakamura Takumi is the BC1 player in this.
They are eligible for assistance, BC1 players. Hence him having an assistant just sitting behind him for Japan. A lob then from Nakamuri. Just trying to see what move he would have done next. Takamura at Haitaka then. BC2 category. Had a very impressive game so far. Has Sugimura. And you'd have to say Japan are a strong team here. As well as Brazil, who have Nerves maybe kicking in a little bit here for Aitaka. Final ball then for Japan. Trying to break that defence there of Brazil. And Brazil have set up the defence incredibly well to try and stop Japan from scoring much more than a couple here. Could be one. Let's see what Ronnie Van Ash has got to say. It looks like it is one blue, but we're going to just double check. Sugimura, the captain for Japan, as well as Marcial Santos. Just confirming that, yes, it is one blue. They can ask for measurements and things at that point, but nope, they are happy with that final result. So Japan take an early lead here in this... Team BC1, BC2, Pool B match. It is 1-0 to Japan against Brazil at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games as these two sides try to book their place into the semi-finals of the Boccia competition. Japan then getting us underway in the second end of this Team BC1, BC2 Pool B match at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. It's Japan versus Brazil. Japan have taken an early lead in the first end, though. However, we've still got five more ends to go. Two balls each per player. And it will be Sugimura Hidaka who throws the first ball. from Japan has left the jack quite open however for Brazil here but 
still very early on in the second end. Looks like we've seen a change for Brazil. De Ferreira's come in to replace Andreas de Oliveira. Tally de Ferrer then getting us yeah. underway in this end with her first with her first throw of the end and of the match. And the next throw looks like it's going to come from Jose de Oliveira. Nice from Jose de Oliveira. Still not quite close enough to the jack from the Japanese first throw, but it does set up. Had a good defense here that they can push on. Natalia de Ferreira then throwing her second ball of the end. It's gone a little bit wide of the of the hoped destination there. Her second Paralympic Games for Natalie de Ferra. She won eight. She came eighth, rather, in the team BC1, BC2 in London 2012. And in the individual BC2 competition, she finished 29th. Also, World Championships just off the top three. She finished fourth in the team BC1, BC2 in 2018 in Liverpool in Great Britain as well, and 27th in the individual BC2. Also took part in the World Championships in Lisbon and finished 53rd in the individual BC2. Captain up, up next then. Marcio Santos, and that is an excellent ball from Santos, the captain. They've really built up a good defence around that jack to make it incredibly difficult for Japan to come back on it. We're just going to get the measurement out here from Ronnie Van Ash. Sorry, they're getting the torch out. That's just to see how much light there is through. And it is the closest pull, ball, so Japan will take their go next. So we're just taking a, a look here. Sugimura Ahitaka not happy with that 
maybe no just seeing exactly just talking to the team here rather about exactly what the defense will be here or the attack probably with that defense defensive wall around the jack they've got quite a lot of time left on the clock and they're really having a long conversation about this one actually and really really dissecting that board to know exactly what they can do from the placement from the Brazilians. So, six minutes on the clock. Measurement coming out then for Ronnie Van Ash. Remains Japan's go then. Whereas Takuki was the one there that just missed shot a little bit. Sugimura Hiditaka and just having a look at, at this one. be the captain Sigmura Hiditaka to take this next ball for Japan. It is his third Paralympic Games. Incredibly experienced this player. And the 39-year-old took silver in the Team BC1, BC2 competition in Rio 2016. Yeah! Excellent from Siggy Mura there, just opening the game up a lot more and putting their blue ball closer to the jack. He also took fifth in the individual BC2 competition in 2016 in Rio as well. So, Brazil then. They are trailing 1-0 early. But N2, plenty can change. Sugimura Hiditaka there, just opening up the defence a bit from Brazil. More conversations going on than we saw in the first end between the teams as they're coming over to take a look at the layout of the balls on the court. Marcial Santos, the captain, just explaining what he wants from the team next. Jose de Oliveira is the next one, the BC1 player who is eligible for assistance. And he will be on the court for the entire game. That is nice. We're going to probably see Ronnie Van Usch take a look there. He's saying that Brazilian ball is the closest. So, Japan.
Japan then. They launch their attack. They do have three balls remaining and Brazil have thrown all their balls for this end. There are three balls remaining. Tsukimura Hiditaka can take a little bit of time to work out exactly what they want to do here. One minute 30 then on the clock for Japan and three balls remaining. One blue is the score, says Ronnie Van Ash, the referee. So you'd think from this Japan can only build on their already victorious second end here. Oh, and I think they're saying no thank you actually. They're going to win that one by one point, giving them a 2-0 lead heading into the third end we'll wait for Ronnie Van Ash just to say one blue and the match will be over so Japan then take a 2-0 lead heading into the third end of this team BC1 BC2 Paul B match against Brazil at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games and three to come So the third end about to get underway here at the Ariake Gymnastics Centre. Japan leading 2-0 against Brazil in this Team BC1, BC2 Pool B match. The two teams looking to get into the semi-finals of this competition at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. It is Brazil to set the jack. And it is Natalie de Ferra who is to throw the first ball of this match. Thirty-one year old a little short on that delivery. You don't really want that first ball to be touching the jack too early on. You want to just try and build a defence around the jack to make it difficult for your opponents. The opponents here, Japan, and they are at the moment leading the way.
Good start from then Japan there. Really setting up a great defense of the jack for Brazil. Still early on though, obviously in this end. Only so much defense you can build up when there's only one ball on the court. It's going to be Jose de Oliveira then, the BC1 player of this team, to throw the second ball. It's nice from Jose de Oliveira. Puts them closer, does Brazil. And Japan. Start to work on the strategy for this game. Sugimura Hidetaka then taking the second delivery for Japan. They are leading this match 2-0 overall, and we're into the third end. There will be three more ends off the back of this, so the game can change very quickly. They don't have a commanding lead, so to speak, at the moment with the 2-0 lead, but it's a lead nonetheless. Nice from Sugimura there. Excellent placement from the Japanese captain. Pleased with that one, a little nod of the head as they return from the box with Brazil. Coming next. See the concentration on Sugimura's face there. Pleased with that placement. Maciel Santos just speaking to his two other teammates about where they can go from here. 2 0 down in the game overall. It's going to be Jose de Oliveira with his second ball of the end. And competitive and accurate player is Jose de Oliveira. And that's excellent from the Brazilian. Really, really strong play from the Brazilian BC1 player. And you can see he's pleased with that one. Like I said, accuracy is key here and Jose de Oliveira is excellent at it. Just pushing the jack a little bit further away from that ball, blue ball from Japan and a little bit closer to Brazil's other red ball. But Japan now. Sugimura Hiditaka, the captain, just chatting to Hiro's Takayuki about the next shot. Communication key here between these three athletes. And what it would be to get into the semi-finals at their home Paralympic Games. Captain Sugimura then will be the man to take the shot. Trying to open it up there with a bit of a smash. Unfortunately, hit the Brazilian's red ball and it didn't quite work out for him there. Could have changed the dynamic of the game completely by opening up the jack a bit more. But Japan's still got plenty of balls remaining. Three left with just over two and a half minutes left on the clock. We won't be counting them out just yet. So just did a bit of a roll up on top there and didn't roll back in exactly how maybe Hiro's Takayuki would have hoped there. Unfortunate the BC2 player, but Sugimura Hiditaka, the captain, just trying to work out where the defence is next. And they can still push on their blue balls closer, which is maybe what Sugimura is saying to Takamura here at this point. Two minutes 
left on the clock for the Japanese players to take their final two balls. The captain must return to the box, though, before they can throw any ball. And it will be Hiro's Takayuki, I think. Or will it be Nakamura Takumi? Strategy even more important in games like this to decide who plays which ball when. The strengths and weaknesses taken into account of each player. Just trying to work out exactly getting that right shot that Nakamura and Japan need here. So it will be Nakamura, the BC1 player, who takes the penultimate ball of this end for Japan. And for a lob there, excellent, trying to push it on. Hasn't been able to get close enough, though. Those Brazilian balls are nestled quite close to the jack at this point, and it seems like two will be. Potra can change incredibly quickly, end from end, and this could be a bit of a swing for the Brazilians. Let's see what Hiro's Takayuki can do with the final ball for Japan. Pushed on the one a little closer. They'll take that at this point. Leading 2-0 in the match, but Brazil still have three balls remaining. So you have to say it could be advantage Brazil at this point. Let's have a look at the replay from Hiro's Takayuki. Just pushed on his own ball a little bit closer to the jack. But will it be enough at this point with Brazil in, you have to say, quite a commanding position in this third end? Trying to do the up and over there, rolling the ball up and over another ball, and that's what's happened. From the experienced captain, Santos. Let's just watch the replay of this one then, replay of him. That's the replay of the ball, and he was trying to get it up and over in between the two reds and, and the point of that shot was to try and sit it on top of the jack because at this point the Japanese team wouldn't have been able to knock it off but he just had a little bit too much pace on it and it managed to roll over instead. Will be the captain again then, Marcial Santos for Brazil. It's the second Paralympic Games. Excellent there from the captain, Marcel Santos. What an incredible shot that was at a really important time in this end. Managed to push off the Japanese defence. Excellent. You can see as well the celebrations there, even though it's just this end. But look, you can see... Excellent shot from the captain. It's really put a lot of the red Brazilian balls nestled close to the jack. Could be three at this point, and that would be the Brazilians taking the lead. So that's how quickly things will change. But let's see what Natalie de Ferra has in this final ball. Not quite reaching the 
the plate. So we are going to have to have a look here. No, Ronnie Van Ash is, is happy with his call. I couldn't quite see what the score will be. He will confirm it to us and confirm it to Sigi Mura as well. Here we are then, three. It is three indeed for Brazil. So the game takes a swing at this point into the halfway point. Brazil have come back fighting in this third end and they are now leading 3-2 over Japan in the Team BC1, BC2, Paul B match at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. So we've seen it. Japan taking the first end, 1-0. They took the second end, 1-0. But in a swing of events, we've seen Brazil take three from that third end. And we head into the fourth end with Brazil now leading 3-2. And you have to say it was largely to do with those last final balls for Brazil. And... Marcel Santos really leading his team here in his second Paralympic Games. Ronnie Van Ash just speaking to Jose de Oliveira's assistant there. Everyone seems happy now, though. And it will be Japan who get us underway here then in the fourth end. And four getting underway between Japan and Brazil then in the team BC1, BC2, Pool B match. It is Brazil leading the way 3-2 against Japan in a great fight back in that third end. And it is Japan who get us underway here in the fourth end. So, Nakamura... Takumi, the BC1 player, just asking for the brakes to be adjusted. And now asking his assistants, his assistant for the next ball. Nakamura Takumi has set the jack and laid the first ball, but he's gone a little bit wide of the jack, which has left the jack open now for Brazil, who are back in this one thanks to a strong third end, 3-0. They took that end after Japan led after the first two with victories in end one and two. Tali Deferra then is the first of the Brazilians to lay to throw a ball in this fourth end. A little bit short there from Deferra. Did a little bit more pace on that one. She studied law in Santos. She made a debut in 2010 for Brazil. 
cut. Looks like we're going to see the BC1 player, Jose de Oliveira. The 44-year-old will take the next throw. It is his third Paralympic Games. Yet to get any medals in the other two games in London and Rio. Good start there for the BC1 player. And Jose de Oliveira manages to get Brazil closest. Nakamura then is the going to take the second ball for Japan here at the Team BC1, BC2, Pool B matches for the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. And it's a good ball for Nakamura. Cheers around as well for the other games that are taking place here at the Ariaki Gymnastics Center as all of these teams and pairs around us trying to get their spot for the semi-finals of their competition. No fracking time for all of these players, I'm sure. It's going to be Jose de Oliveira then up next for the BC1 category, BC1, BC2 playing teams here, but the BC1 player must remain on court for the entire match. Marcel Santos then. The captain here uh, for the Brazilian team will be taking the next throw for Brazil. Thank you. 
So Brazil setting up a good defence here against Japan. With Natali De Ferra then throwing the final ball in this end for Brazil. Japan are going to come and have a look at this, though. As you can see, those red balls are from Brazil and they are surrounding the jack. But... Captain Sugimura Hiditaka just explaining to his team what he thinks would be a good launch of attack here. Is Takayuki starting the defense? <laughs> Sharing a joke there with that ball. Fourth ball then for Japan. Two balls will remain off the back of this, and you have to think from the body language here that Japan look like they could be in a comfortable position in this end. But let's see exactly what they choose to do here. They are trailing now 3-2 after leading early on, and that is an excellent shot from Heroes Dagiyaga. Oh, what an excellent shot from Heroes. Really, really strong play there from the... And that's why they were smiling beforehand. Really, really strong play from the Japanese team. Heroes Takayuki with this blinding effort there to just push on their ball a little bit closer to the jack, just finding that small little space through that defence that Brazil have set up. But that is excellent from the Japanese team for the BC1, BC2, Paul B matches here at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. See what Sugimura Hiditaka was trying to do there. Didn't quite work out for the captain. Another ball to go for Japan. So let's see where that leaves Japan. It looks like. It could be two to Japan, so let's see what Ronnie Van Ash has to say, though. Two blue. Two blue. So, indeed, it is two blue for Japan. That means that they now lead this match 4-3 overall. Oh, it is swinging this match every which direction at the moment. N1 was won by Japan, N2 won by Japan, N3 won by Brazil. And it is Japan back in the driving seat for this one in the Team BC1, BC2, Pool B. Matches to try and get into the semi-final of the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Team Games. It's Japan 4, Brazil 3.
And five underway then in the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games here for the Team BC1, BC2 pool matches. Japan and Brazil battling it out to try and book their place into the semi-final in these pool matches. Japan leading 4-3 as it stands over Brazil. But this match is not over yet. Marcel Santos then setting the jack and laying down quite an impressive first ball as well. Sigimura Hidetaka then throwing the first ball. Excellent from Japan there. Nakamura Tak Takumi with an excellent shot to get their jack closest there and defend as well from the jack. So Japan will be pleased with that. They're leading 4-3 in this team BC1, BC2 pool match. is really ebbing and flowing between the two. Sugimura Hiditaka just coming to have a look now. And the captain, just a conversation with his team once again, concentrating on their blue ball there. So might be saying push on here.
Excellent shot there from Japan. Cheers around the Ariaki centre for that one. Doesn't look like it will be close enough, but it is setting up a good defensive line here from the Brazilian Red Bulls. Nakamura Takumi with an excellent shot there and nearly went for the roll on top and the roll up and over. That's what it would have ended up as a... It just ran out of pace to the end. Here is Takayuki then. Hitting that ball number five of the Brazilian defence and it must be quite a heavy ball. Probably quite soft and it didn't move. of experience in this Japanese side. That was the roll up and over. Just trying to push that blue ball closer. Means Japan's go. Sugimura Hizitaka just coming to have a look again. Some players and teams decide not to look at all, but Sugimura taking all the time he can. 36 seconds left on the clock for Japan. And this is their final ball. Okay, okay, okay. And that wasn't quite enough to take the win in this end, you have to say, with Brazil. Plenty of balls remaining. Marcial Santos just looking for a score, I think, here from Ronnie Van Ash, who's taken his glasses off to check for this one. I think that would be one for Brazil. Marcial Santos just wanted to take another look at this one. And three minutes left on the clock, so we've got plenty of time to have a look. I think he's going to ask Ronnie Van Ash just to measure, just to be sure. And that might mean because they aren't going to take their final remaining balls. They do have four remaining, so you'd think at this point they'd, they'd want to, but Japan have set up a, an excellent defence here around the ball that actually... If they carried on, they could knock their own ball out of play or give themselves a disadvantage. So let's see what Marcial Santos decides to do here. 
No more play. So there you go. That will be, it looks like, one to Brazil in this fifth end. Let's double check to see what Ronnie Van Ash says. All the balls must be laid down before he can end the game officially. And they have to be in as well. So one for red then. That is exactly what we like to see heading into the sixth and deciding end here at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. So it is Brazil who level it up now. Four all between Brazil and Japan in the team BC1, BC2. Paul B matches at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. Still all to play for in the final end. One red and finish. Neck and neck then, these two sides. Japan took the first two ends, 1-0. Brazil came back in it, 3-0 in the third. 2-0 then for Japan in the fourth. And then here we are, a 1-0 defeat for Brazil over Japan in the fifth end. So we go again for end six at four all between Japan and Brazil. So the final and deciding end is underway here at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. This team BC1, BC2 pool match between Japan and Brazil. And get the popcorn out because this is going to be a thriller for all as it stands at the moment heading into this final end. We've also seen a substitution as well, but that is excellent from Japan starting us off here. Heroes Takayuki very pleased with that first placement of that ball. The jack is short and the first ball is excellent. No change for Brazil. Natali de Freira is looking intently on as captain Marcial Santos. Throws his first ball of the game. Just opening the jack up again there, knocking that impressive first ball from Japan. Give himself a lot more space and to give Natalia some more, a better line. Natalia de Ferra then to take this second ball. So just gone a little wide past the jack. Bit too much pace on that one. Just speaking to Marcial Santos, the captain. Natalie de Ferra then take her second ball of the game. Nope, a change there for the captain, who's going to decide now for Jose de Oliveira, the BC1 player, to take 
his first shot of the game. And it's a soft one for Jose de Oliveira. Again, just a little bit too long, and a bit too deep in the field. You can see disappointment a little bit on Jose de Oliveira's face, four all as it stands between Japan and Brazil in this sixth and final end. Natalie de Ferra then with her attempt on this. Just listening across what she's been told by Marcial Santos. He's really coaching her in this one. Quite and both experienced players, both played in a couple of Paralympic games. Excellent there from Natalie de Ferra. She'll be pleased with that one. That's a good shot from the Brazilian. And she's closed that gap that was open there for Japan. Nestled in, great line. It's a good defence. Starting to be built up here from Brazil. That's the change then we've seen just in the middle. Uji Yuriko joining the Japanese attack. It's replacing Nakamura Takamui. She is also a BC1 player, so replacing Nakamura, who you have to say has had a brilliant game so far. He must have one BC1 player on the court at all times, so that's why they've switched a BC1 player for a BC1 player. Fuji Yuriko. Second, third Paralympic Games for the 48 year old, her first throw of the game. And it's excellent from Fuji. Not close enough, but sets up a nice shot for the Japanese players here just to push on their ball a little closer. Brazil have got three redundant balls really in the game. It's just that one that red ball that's closest to the jack at the moment that's causing the Japanese players. A little bit of trouble, but this is a great first shot from Fuji. Gives Japan a really good opportunity here. Maybe from Hiro's Takayuki's position to push on the two balls. Sugimura Hiditaka then taking a good hard look at the placement of the balls. Four balls remaining. Fuji has played in two Paralympic Games so far, Rio 2016, London 2012, and Rio. She helped win silver for the team BC1, BC2 players in 2016, and she was 16th in, in the individual BC1 2016 Rio Games. But in London, seventh in the team and 11th in the individual in 2012 can they go one better here just pushing on their own Japanese ball to try 
and get closer to the jack and build up a defence against Brazil. Now biting stuff in this team BC1, BC2, Paul B match. Four all between the two sides as the teams try and book their place into the semi-final of the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. What's heroes Takayuki got? Could it be a pacey one here? Excellent from Heroes Takayuki once again. A commanding shot in this match, in this end as well. We've seen it from Heroes Takayuki. These final dangerous shots from the Japanese, and this is exactly what we're seeing here, knocking that Brazilian defensive ball that was sitting closest to the jack away and really giving Japan a chance here to win this match. Marcel Santos then, the captain for Brazil. He's aware of the scoreline, four all between Japan and Brazil. And it will be Jose de Oliveira from the BC1 category who will take this throw for Brazil. Two balls then remaining. Softer ball and that is Excellent from Jose de Oliveira, but the blue ball has just been pushed on a little bit closer there to the jack, so... More conversations between Santos and de Oliveira. Santos going to come and just have a look again. Maciel, Santos and... Sigamura and Hiditaka, the two captains in this game. Really like to make sure they can see every angle of this court as it's gone down to four all between these two pair, these two teams. <laughs> Two top pairs and the two top pairs or teams in each pool will qualify for the semi-finals, the quarter-finals in this competition. Looks like that blue ball may just be a smidge closer still. Will it be one or two? All that Japan need at this point, though, is one. Just getting the confirmation. It is Japan's go, so Brazil are closer as it stands. Very nerve-wracking here. All these two sides and... For the athletes, they're used to this sort of pressure. People on the sidelines, lots of twitchy feats going on. We've seen Hiroz Takayuki in this match with one shot to change the entire end. Well, we see Japan able to overcome Brazil here and give themselves a chance to put their places into the semi-finals. Ronnie Van Ash just measuring. Still at the moment would be Japan with two. So no more balls for Brazil. And so Japan decide actually we'll take that, we'll take that win. So confirmation coming up from Ronnie Van Ash. It looks to be Japan who have won, won this one, 6-4. Marcial Santos just coming back to have a look, but Ronnie Van Ash will end this match. 
one has to be in the appropriate place, and it is. Two blue. Two for blue. So Japan win this team BC1, BC2, Pool B match against Brazil. They take a 6-4 win in this group game. One step closer, hopefully, for them to get into the semi-finals of the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. It ends 6-4. So that was a thrilling competition between these two sides. Japan managed to edge Brazil in the end, 6-4, but it was now biting in that final end. Went down to 4 all, and it just took two there for Japan to take the win. Japan were leading in the first end and the second end, and it was Brazil who came back fighting in the third end to take it to a 3-2 lead. And then slowly but surely, Japan managed to overcome Brazil to take a 6-4 win. Sugimura Hijitaka then, the captain of Japan. We'll sit with Marcial Santos. And then we'll just look at the final results with Ronnie Van Ash. To say he was a standout player, Hiroz Takayuki. In the dying moments of the end, he would place a real dangerous shot to put Japan in a commanding position. But it was excellent from Brazil. They fought incredibly hard in that one to take Japan to a four-all draw coming to the end of N5 to a shootout in N6. But it was that team, Sugimura's Hiditaka's Jap Japanese team, that were victorious here against Brazil. It ends Japan six, Brazil four in the Team BC1, BC2 Pool B game at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. Japan, they win this one.
and welcome along to day 10 of the Tokyo Paralympic Games from the Ariake Gymnastics Centre. It's day 7 of the Boccia Tournament and we're going to be concentrating on the pairs BC3. Pool B looking to book their place into the semi-finals of the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. And it is a game that can change in the blink of an eye. We're going to be concentrating though on Hong Kong, China who versus uh, Australia in this game here as you can see hong kong china have played three one two lost one australia meanwhile played three also one two and lost one so it's going to be a fascinating competition between these two in the pairs bc3 pool daniel michelle on the right of the screen 304 alongside jamieson leeson Here's our referee then for the match, Beatrice Casido, as the two sides are just warming up as it stands. So the ramps will be removed. for Hong Kong, China to come forward. And that's how we're looking at the moment, the previous results for Hong Kong, China. Tie break between Hong Kong, China and Japan, and they won that, but they lost against Brazil in the pairs BC3 Pool B matches. Here are our teams. Ho Yen Kei and Se Tak Hua. This is how it happened for Australia so far. They lost against Japan 3 2, but they beat Portugal and they beat Brazil so far. So they can make one change. Daniel Michelle on the right and Jameson Leeson on the left and Spencer Cote is the guy waiting if they want to make a substitution. We just wait for this pairs BC3 Pool B match to get underway. If you're new to Boccia, then you have six balls per side. The individual game consists of four ends, as well as the pairs end, which consists of four ends. Each player will have six balls across the team, and the aim is to get closest to the white ball, which is called the jack. And, and in this case, with the pairs, each player will have three balls and they will work alongside their teammate to decide exactly what the tactics will be against their opposition. Here we've got Hong Kong, China versus Australia. And the prize at the end of it, if they can win their ball match, will be a trip to the semi-finals. Looking to book their place to try and win gold here in the BC3 pairs.
Botch has been around for a couple of years now on the Paralympic programme. 1984, it made its debut. It's now being practised in around 50 countries around the world, so it's really picking up some momentum, is Botcher. Four categories, the BC1, BC2, BC3, BC4. We had the individual matches, BC1, BC2, BC3 and BC4. And we've got the pairs and the teams. Only BC3 and BC4 play the pairs. And BC1 and BC2 play a mixed game in the team. So, just waiting to get underway here. And the match is underway, and it'll be Australia getting us underway in this first end. So, the first end of this Tokyo 2020 Paralympic pairs BC3 pool match between Australia and Hong Kong of China is about to get underway. End one. There is seven minutes on the clock for each side. And they must throw their three balls, each player, in that time. Daniel Michelle, his assistant, Ash McClure. In the BC3 category, the assistant also wins a medal. And Daniel Michelle has set quite a Short jack there, and the first ball will be thrown. Incredible game, Botcher, BC3 specifically. Our athletes with the most severe impairments, they can't use their hands or their feet. They use pointers, and this is the ramp that they have. They are eligible for assistance, as you can see, but the assistants aren't allowed to face the court. They're not allowed to face play in that way they are able to though talk to the athletes about exactly what they want they're not allowed to discuss any tactics however they are only allowed to do what the athlete asks of them so first ball then has been thrown by Australia and that is Hong Kong China's first throw and it is gone out of play to a dead ball. is going to take the second delivery and throw the second ball for Hong Kong China. The pointer he has, and it's a slower ball. And that's a good start from Sir Takwa. Taken uh, Hong Kong, China, rather, have taken four gold medals, one silver in the Paralympic Boccia Summer Paralympics. Australia, meanwhile, on bronze over the time from 1984 where Boccia made its Paralympic debut in New York to 2016 in Rio. Yeah. 
So second ball there from Hong Kong, China. Told it is now Australia's turn as that ball was good enough from Kerry Young. Okay. Interesting to hear the conversations between Daniel Michelle and Jamison Leeson. Amanda Leeson is her assistant. Leeson is Jameson Leeson's mother. So a family affair between those two with her mother Amanda as her assistant. If they win a medal here, it would mean that Amanda Leeson, Jameson's mother, would also win a medal. But a bit too far ahead at the moment as we're just in the pairs BC3 Pool B match. Daniel Michelle, I'm just thinking about the next move here for Australia. out their next shot between Daniel Michelle and Jameson Leeson. Casey, a ball there from Daniel Michelle. It has gone out of play, but it has opened the jack up a little bit more for Daniel Michelle here. So it will be Hong Kong China's go. The three balls remaining. A nice ball there from Anya Michelle has moved that Australia ball, just pushed it on a little bit closer and removed Hong Kong China's blue ball at the same time. So looks like it'll be Set Takwan. a pacey a ball here from Sir Takwan. And it was indeed gone out as a dead ball, but let's just move that red ball a little bit further from the jack to try and give Hong Chong China just a little bit of space here around the jack. Conversations going on between Ho Yun Kei and Sir Takwan.
So no boccia medals to be handled out today. As these two try to look <laughs> towards the semi-finals. ball there from Sir Takwa. A nice placement there on their fifth ball. And it is closest to the jack for the 36-year-old. Nice line on that and just nestles it way, its way through the two reds and is the closest one in this BC3 Pool B match. Only four ends in this match. So we're on end one of four, but there are seven minutes per end for each athlete to decide what they want to do. Three minutes remaining left for Australia with three balls remaining. Looks like it's going to be Jamison Leeson in her... First Paralympic Games for Australia. Plays for Botcher New South Wales. She was first introduced to Botcher back at the age of four, and she pursued it in 2018. So, nice from Jameson Leeson there, removing again uh, one of the defending Hong Kong China balls. She trains around five hours a day, three times a week at the Sydney Olympic Park in New South Wales. So a push off there for Jameson Leeson. Daniel Michelle with his ball hit the jack. So just. Push on the jack a little bit away from the red ball. So see where they go from this one. And Rio. Tanya Michelle finished 15th in the individual BC3 2016 Rio Games. It is debut for Australia in 2013 in Sydney. In Australia took up the sport at the age of 15 in New South Wales. <clears throat> A memorable time winning the 2019 World Open in Hong Kong in China. Because one of his main influences is his mother. muscular atrophy type 2 it's a motor neuron condition it means you need assist, uh, assistance for everyday activities but and then botcher, of course they are eligible as well for assistance and Jamison Leeson's all there just enough to get Australia with the edge here Hong Kong, China, then. Final ball here. So just the push off there to try and get the line a bit better for Australia on their final ball. One minute is then called for Hong Kong. Uh, uh, As it stands. Uh, uh, Australia might have the ball the closest. We might have to do a measurement there, but we'll see what the referee says. Excellent from Hong Kong there. And it looks like it could be 
Hong Kong that take this end, but let's see. Two captains coming over, Ho Yen K and Daniel Michelle. I think they're going to say blue is closest, but we're just going to check with the referee, Beatrice Casido. Red, blue is closer. So looks like it will be one point to Hong Kong China here. We'll get confirmation from the referee who will end this match officially, this end officially. One blue. One blue. So in the first end then, it is Hong Kong China who take the advantage heading into the second end over Australia in the pairs BC3 Pool B match. They take a 1-0 lead heading into the second end, looking to book their place into the semi-finals of the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games if they can top their group. Second end then getting underway in the Ariaki Gymnastics Centre with Hong Kong China leading 1-0 against Australia in this pairs BC3 pool match. Second end now underway, seven minutes on the clock. Hong Kong China have set the jack and the first ball will be from the captain, Ho Yen Kei.
Nice ball then from Australia with Daniel Michelle. Good defensive first ball from them. To Takwa then. Third ball for Hong Kong, China. Takwa setting up the third ball then here for Hong Kong China. They do lead this game 1-0. Oh! Oh! <laughs> nice from Takwa. Happy with that one. Great ball. Brilliant line. To Takwa at his first Paralympic Games as well. Did win at the Asian Para Games in the pairs BC3s. He took a win there and ninth in individual BC3. So back to Australia now. Daniel Michelle alongside Jameson Leeson. In her Paralympic debut, Daniel Michelle, meanwhile, took part in Rio, his second Paralympic Games. that the athlete has to have in the assistant as well. You see with the BC3. Excellent from Danny Michelle there. Just I think you will think he's just overshot that a little bit. Pushed it on a little bit too hard on his own ball. The trust these two have in each other. Jameson Leeson working with his, her mum, Amanda. Ash McClure working with Daniel Michelle. The accuracy that they have to push the ball down the ramp with is incredible. Just having second assistant just being referred to here. Well, I think let's just go make a win and then drive. Right, AB. AB. How much can you say? Uh -huh. Head referee you heads back and the game continues. Very nice addition if we can get that. Yeah. All right. 
Yeah. Really nice to hear the encouragement between teammates as well. It's a slight change for Jamison Leeson. A bit shorter. Daniel Michelle really giving some support there to his teammate. Very good, he says, of that shot, and it was because Jameson Leeson has just now opened up the jack. And that is what Daniel Michelle can see. Let's hear what they're saying. So, a similar shot maybe from Jamie Leeson here, trying to see if she can push on this red ball to make it closer to the jack. And it's taken two shots to set it up. This is the final ball for Australia in this end. Hong Kong, Hong Kong, China are leading 1-0 with four minutes remaining on the clock for their remaining three balls. And that's exactly what she was trying to do. That's an excellent shot from Jameson Leeson, just doing the roll on top, which is exactly what it says on the tin, which is rolling your ball on top of the jack and another ball to position it to give yourself the best advantage possible. And that's exactly what she's done. That's a really lovely placement from Jameson Leeson. So Ho Yun Kei just coming out to have a look exactly at the positioning of the balls. And she seems happy with what she's seen and knows what they should do next. And the conversation then, three balls remaining for three minutes left on the clock for Hong Kong China. That ball's gone quite far deep in the court and is gone out. <laughs> did knock down that ball that had the advantage so it did its job even though it went out of play so the ball was sacrificed but was a good placement or it was a good shot rather to remove Jamison Leeson's placement
Second end then of four. So two more to come off the back of this. Exactly the same. Seven minutes will be put onto the clock. Takwa. Soft the ball there and a push on to his own ball, and that's a nice shot. It still remains Hong Kong here, I think, who will be leading this match. Let's see what Beatrice Casido says. She is going to get out the torch, I think, to check this one. Exactly what she's doing, and we need to just check those two balls that are closest. Is it the red or is it the blue? Whoever it is would just win a point for this one, but we need to see who. So let's see what Beatrix Casido says at this point. Everyone must go back to their positioning. One ball remaining for Hong Kong at this point, but I think Beatrix Casido. Just confirming that maybe the blue ball was closest at this point. Let's see, though. That could have pushed the red ball in there. Could be Australia here. We're going to have to do a check again. They're ever so close. So two captains come forward, which is Daniel Michelle from Australia and Ho Yan Kei from Hong Kong, China. And so the explaining. Very, very close. What are we saying here? One all, it looks like. Let's double check that, though. Look like it will be one all to both. One all to both. So that then means that Hong Kong lead 2-1, but Australia are off the mark and back in it. So one minute is called between the two, and this is a good time to reset for the athletes. The ramps to be reset as well. But it is one all in that one, neck and neck. Both balls were closer, Hong Kong and Australia. So we head into the third penultimate end here in this four-end match at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. The pairs, the BC3 Pool B match, Will it be Australia or Hong Kong that look to book their place into the semi-finals? Third end then underway here between Hong Kong, China and Australia and the pairs BC3 Pool B match looking to get into the semi-finals of the Boccia tournament at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. And it's 2-1 Hong Kong as it stands in this third end. Halfway point, good place to be leading, but it doesn't tell the entire story of what could happen in the future. So Australia set the jack and it's quite a short ball and they will also deliver the first ball here. It will be Jameson Leeson with Amanda Leeson, her mother, as her assistant in the BC3 category. The assistant also wins a medal. So that would be a nice moment in the family if they could get to the finals of this competition. Yeah, 
Excellent start there from Jameson Leeson. That first ball always must be defensive as well as close to the jack. And that's exactly what Jameson Leeson has done here. Really opened up the opportunities for Australia really early on. Assistance in BC3 cannot face the quarter play. They are not allowed to really talk to the athlete bar taking instructions. So they can't have any play on strategy or any calls or any any what would be if they did interfering with what the player wants. It would not be allowed in the rule book. It is all down to what the athlete wants to do. So nice pacey ball there from Ho Yen Kei. It has gone out of play, but that has opened up the jack a lot more in this game. So Takwa. Finding up the next shot for Hong Kong China. They do lead 2-1 in this third end of this pairs BC3 Pool B match. Other games are going on around as well. Other pool matches in the pairs and the teams. That's why you can hear cheering around. Different teams cheering different athletes. And it's lovely to have a bit of an atmosphere here. Obviously, we're not allowed to have much of an atmosphere because of the pandemic. So we've got no crowds here. So no spectators. But a few of us lucky ones are able to watch over these Paralympic Games. And that is a nice ball from Tse It was a slower ball, but it did the job at this point. So Australia next up. Going to come back from a 2-1 deficit here. just hear the conversations being had by Daniel Michelle, left, right, left. So not only have they got to communicate with their team, but they also need to communicate with their assistant who act as, a, as an extension of the player. That's why they win medals as well, because they are so integral in this game. So, N3 then, Australia versus Hong Kong, China. The preliminaries here, the group matches, the pool three, BC three pool matches, the pairs. BC three and BC four, they don't play teams, they only play the pairs. And BC one and BC two, they don't play pairs, they only play teams. And in the teams, you have three, three players. In the pairs, it's exactly what it says, just two. And similarly in the individuals also. So, another slower ball there from Dan Daniel Michelle. You see the concentration on these players' faces as well. Very handy. We have to be careful with the pace here. So, maybe we go like 9-7. Yeah. Does that work, you reckon? Yeah, 7. 9-7 is what is being said there. Beautiful. That's nice. And you hear Daniel Michelle. Just giving his teammate, Jameson Leeson, just a little bit of encouragement there. Beautiful, he says, and it is beautiful. It's a nice push on to the own red, to their own red, closer to the jack, and it becomes Hong Kong turn again. Five minutes left on the clock, plenty of time here in the BC three pairs games. Hey. 
So Takwa just communicating with his assistant. Pacey ball there, just trying to open up the jack a little bit and remove those defending Australian balls that are sitting around the jack as it stands. Bringing the ball down a little further. Roll up and over. He hasn't quite cleared the Australian ball, but it was a really good, accurate ball, and it is good enough to be close enough to the jack as it stands. Excellent from Tsir Takwa. Uh, don't, uh, didn't we just go blue out? Yeah, just you blue purely out. If she gets on the jack, I'll have a shot to get it out as well. So it's all good. Just smash the blue. So I go for the save. I go for the save of the, um, save the blue, okay? I think Yeah, BC. Yeah, that does. Four power and hard work. Eighteen years old is Jameson Leeson in her first ever Paralympic Games. Excellent from Jameson Leeson there, completely pushing off the blue ball. And that is really excellent from the 18-year-old. Could be a defining shot of the match and of this end. But Hong Kong still have two balls remaining and everything, everything can change very quickly in Boccia. Tucked 
tactics so important. Nice final ball there from Hong Kong. I'm not sure it'll be enough though. Australia. Two remaining balls here. And we'll have the last say in this end. One more end to come off the back of this to determine. So just listening to what Daniel Michelle had to say there and I think he's trying to get three points here. If they can get three points, they'll take the lead heading into the final end. Michelle just coming to have a look at this because that's probably not quite the angle they were after. That ball from Hong Kong is closest, but if you can get a clear line to that and knock that blue ball out. Just push off there. And if you can clear that blue ball or be able to nestle a red ball in the middle of, the, of them both. what he was hoping to do there, Daniel Michel. Just push off that blue ball and get the red ball closer. So let's have a look how much by Australia will win this end, heading into the final end of this match. Going to do some measuring just to be sure how much by. So, you're going to make a shot like that, you might as well make it count because it's a brilliant shot. Just to put this end to bed. So, we're going to say two reds here. Just to double check. Two red then to Australia, and the match takes another swing then. This is closer. Can you see? Okay. Do the other one one more time to make this, that red one. Confirmation. The red, the red. The red one? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, red. Oh, red. Do red then is the say. Daniel Michelle just asked him to see again. 
exactly to be sure but that is two reds so two for australia then and a one minute is called so it is a swing suddenly in the game in the pairs bc3 pool b match australia take a 3-2 lead heading into this final end of the pairs bc3 pool b match against hong kong china as they're looking to give themselves a chance to get into the semi-finals of the tokyo Paralympic 2020 Games. So the fourth and deciding end getting underway here at the Ariake Gymnastics Centre between Hong Kong, China and Australia. And it's Australia who lead as it stands. They won the third end 2-0, which gave them a 3-2 lead coming into this final end. Hong Kong, China getting us underway then with Tsitakwa. Jack has been set, and it's quite a short jack. And Tia Takwa will take the first ball. Excellent there from Tia Takwa, representing Hong Kong, China. A good defensive first ball is thrown. And Australia talking about their next move. Really fascinating battle between these two. And one was won by Hong Kong, China. And then Australia have fought back here with a 1 0 win in N2 and then a 2 0 win in N3. Uh, one all, rather, draw in N2, rather. And a 2 0 win in N3. So it leads. 3-2 for Australia. A nice pacey ball there from Daniel Michelle and really opens up the jack a bit more in this early stage of this fourth end so that really is excellent accuracy there from Daniel Michelle just to push off that blue ball Yeah, I 
nice and easy is the brilliant shot there from Jameson Leeson on debut at the Paralympic Games. The 18-year-old alongside her mother, Amanda Leeson, and just getting a little bit of encouragement from Daniel Michelle, who has played at a Paralympic, has played in a Paralympic Games uh, back in Rio 2016, 15th in the individual BC3. Hasn't played pairs in the Paralympic Games, however, but he did win silver in the World Championships in the pairs BC3 in 2018 in Liverpool. And also third in the individual BC3 in 2018, also in Liverpool in Great Britain. Pacey ball again from Hong Kong. And they're really starting to get quite attacking in this fourth end now. They are trailing 3-2 in this final end. Obviously, all is not lost if they lose a ball match at this competition. But the more they can win, the more chance they have to book their place into the semi-finals. Really pacey yeah. ball up and over from Jameson Leeson. You hear Daniel Michelle saying that's pretty perfect, and it was. It's opened up the jack incredibly well. Two fantastic shots from the 18-year-old as Australia lead the way 3-2 in the fourth end. So that blue ball is closer, but it won't tell the full story here because Daniel Michelle is just lining up his next shot. And in theory, that should nestle in up close to the jack. So Sakwa and Ho Yen Ke have played an incredible match here, taking the lead early on. Everything can change very quickly in Boccia. Australia closest at this point and you would expect that from Jamie Leeson's brilliant shot beforehand to open up the jack and allow Daniel Michelle to get a ball closer plenty of time left though for Hong Kong China three balls remaining all can change still we are into this final end of the BC three Paul B match in the pairs.
just discussing between Sir Takwa and Ho Young K what the attack will be here. Once again, the assistants have nothing to do with the players at this point. They are an extension of the player and they will not talk about strategy or what to do next or help in any way in that sort of way. They are there to move the ramp to the right place and to follow the athlete's instructions step by step. They are not allowed to make any decisions in this game. Incredible accuracy from these athletes. It's a higher up ball, that one, on the ramp. Because Sir Takwa was trying to go for a bit of an attacking ball there. And unfortunately, it didn't quite work out for Hong Kong. Two balls remaining. Nice there from Hong Kong again. It is still Hong Kong's go, but it's near attack. It's an interesting point in the match where things could change. Three, one ball remaining for Hong Kong with 40 seconds left to do it. and. This will be an important ball for Ho Yenke in this match, in this end. Thirty seconds is called then. And the 27-year-old just lining up the ball exactly how she wants it from here. And that is an excellent shot from Ho Yang Kei. You can hear Se Takwa saying, yes, that is a good one. Cheering as well. If we go to just one point for these two, we'll go to a tie break if it goes to three all. So what can Australia do from here? Two balls remaining and Things can change pretty quickly in Boccia. Soft Jack, you hear Daniel Michelle saying that. It's quite a soft jack. So that means it's a lot harder to try and knock. It stands its ground a lot more when it's a softer ball. Plenty of time for Australia here. Minute 40 on the clock, and you have to think at this point. Australia in a good position. 
Not doing it like that, unfortunately, though. It's that blue ball is still closer. And this will be the final ball of the match for Daniel Michelle. And if it goes to one point, then we go to a tie break. minute is called for Australia. Can Daniel Michelle nestle into that tiny gap he might be able to get from this is going to be an incredibly interesting shot for the accuracy here. What's Daniel Michelle going to go for? 30 seconds. 30 seconds is called then to Dan Daniel Michelle. Take a deep breath, Australia. Let's see what this ball can do. It looks like we're going to a tie break. Let's see exactly what we're going to do here, but it is finished. One blue. So, confirmation from the referee here, one blue and finish. So, as it stands, we're going to a tie break. One minute between and it is a tie break. Hong Kong have leveled it up at three all at this point in the pairs BC3. Ball B pairs looking to book their place into the semi-finals of the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games, Hong Kong three, Australia three. We go to a tie break. toss then to happen to determine who will start this match. Do you want your jack on the cross and start throwing or do you want this jack and then you start throwing? Your jack and you start. So the jack will be placed after hand sanitizer comes out of course. And it will be placed in the middle of the court to get this tie break underway between Australia and Hong Kong, China. Seven minutes will be put back onto the clock for both sides. With the scores level at three all, no points to be awarded in this final tie break, but the winner will take the win. Takia getting us underway here. By default, the 
First ball is always closest, really, as there's no other balls on the court. So we go again. Here we are then, Australia's oh. Couldn't quite hear what the issue of that ball was, but it's going to be removed out of play. Remains red. Excellent shot there from the Australians. It does become Hong Kong China's go. So one ball was taken out of play for Australia. Referee removed it and put it to the side. And that was Jameson Leeson's. But the second ball from Australia was strong. So Hong Kong forced a tie break here between Australia. Lucy Ball from South Tenghua. Ball goes out, but it did open up the jack a little bit. Three and a half minutes then left on the clock for Hong Kong here. Three balls remaining.
Excellent there. You can see what it means to the man from Hong Kong. Blue balls now defending all around the jack. Tia Takwa with an excellent shot here. Really nice. Straight through the middle and closest to the jack and set up quite a defensive circle around the jack. Jameson Leeson then. Beautiful shot, you heard it there from Daniel Michelle, and it was a beautiful shot. Just pushed off the blue ball, might have gone further out of play. However, doesn't make any difference at this point. It's done the job. Three balls then remaining for Australia. Nerve-wracking game here. Gone to a tie break. Daniel Michelle, do you hear them? Daniel Michelle then uses his pointer to push on the jack. Let's give himself some more space with that line towards the jack. We're just going to see at this point who is closer. That will determine whose go it is next. And it's quite clearly as it stands. The blue ball closer. You can hear there, they're thinking about the shot next and the shot to come. Jameson Leeson then, just speaking to her assistant and her mother, Amanda. 18 years old, her first Paralympic Games. We can just try and get to the semi-finals. The game's ending around. Empty, empty courts now. But this one is going down to the tiebreak. Beautiful shot, well done. Daniel Michelle says beautiful shot, well done. He's happy with that one. It's got a great line, that one. And just... Opened up the jack a lot more for 
Daniel Michelle now. So, in the tie break. Final ball. For Daniel Michelle representing Australia. One minute. One minute is called then for Australia. Nice from Daniel Michelle there. So that will be Australia's job done in this, in this tie break. And it will go to the final two balls for Hong Kong, Hong Kong China. The advantage or the final say will come from the two Hong Kong players, Hugh Young Kei and Tia Takua. Will be Q Yen K, who takes his penultimate shot. length on that one indeed and as it stands that ball would be closest as you can see they've been told it would be one hit and that would mean Hong Kong win are they going to take their final ball that's the question here and they're not going to they've decided not to so it went to a tie break in the end and they battled hard for it at Hong Kong, China, but they have managed to beat Australia in this pairs BC3 Pool B match, looking to book their place into the semi-finals of the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. It's ended in a tie break, but it's Hong Kong who win. So Hong Kong then win here. They took it to a tie break, but victorious over Australia. We saw some fascinating play between these two sides, but it will be Hong Kong who are the winners.
Well, what a day we've seen here. Day 10 of the Tokyo Paralympic Games here from the Ariake Gymnastics Center on day seven of the Boccia tournament. We've seen some fascinating play today as well. Colombia versus Japan was the first one up and it ended 7-1 to Japan in the pairs BC4, Pool B, and then it was Japan versus Brazil in the team BC1, BC2, Pool B. Uh, competition and that one went to six ends in the BC1, BC2, but it was six four winners in the end of Japan. And in the pairs BC4, we just saw Australia versus Hong Kong, China, and that one went to the very end. We went to a tie break in the pairs BC3, Paul B, but in the end, it ended up Hong Kong, China, who were victorious here at the Ariake Gymnastics Center.